day everyone! For today's lesson, we're going to discuss the respiratory system. But before that, I have a few questions to you. Have you tried the following activities such as playing volleyball, dancing, playing soccer, and even playing basketball. These activities mentioned involve our respiratory system. Now what is the function of our respiratory system? Let us discuss the parts and function of the respiratory system. The function of the respiratory system is the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the atmosphere and the blood and between the blood and the cells of the body. The respiratory system is responsible for taking in oxygen and ejecting carbon dioxide and its primary function is to supply blood with oxygen. Here are the parts of the respiratory system. We have nasal cavity, oral cavity, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchial tree, bronchioles, lungs, and diaphragm. Let us discuss each part of the respiratory system. Let us have first the nasal cavity. Nasal cavity is the area where oxygen enters the body. It is lined with tiny hairs called cilia and mucous membrane that secretes sticky fluid. Next, we have the pharynx. It is also called as the throat and it is located right after the mouth and the nose. Next to pharynx is the larynx, which is also called as the voice box. It is the organ that connects the pharynx and the trachea. It contains the vocal cords that produce sounds. Next to larynx is the trachea, which is also called as the windpipe. It is a hollow tube that connects the larynx to the bronchi of the lungs. It is composed of rings of cartilage and lined with the mucous membrane. The trachea is composed of moist mucous membrane, which contains a small hair-like structure called cilia. Next to trachea are the bronchi, which is the extension of the windpipe that shuttle air to and from the lungs. Next are the bronchial trees that serves as the branching system of the bronchi and bronchioles that conducts air from the windpipe into the lungs. Next are the bronchioles, which is the smallest division of bronchi. Bronchi, bronchial tree, and bronchioles are located inside the lungs. The lungs are cone-shaped organs of respiration in humans, covered with two-layer membrane called pleura, and it is surrounded by rib cage. Next is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a sheet of smooth muscle located below the lungs. It works with the lungs during the breathing process. Now, what do you think will happen if one part of the system fails to carry out its function properly? Now, let us discuss the path of air into the lungs. First, air enters your mouth and your nose. Inside our nose, we have cilia. These are hairs in the nose that filter out dust and other large particles in the air. Cilia trap foreign particles from air and sweep them toward the throat so that they do not enter the lungs. Mucous membrane beneath the cilia in the nasal passages warm and moisten the air while trapping foreign materials. What are the effects of dust on the lungs? Filtered air then passes through the upper throat called the pharynx. A plough of tissue called epiglottis which covers the opening of the larynx prevents food particles from entering the respiratory tubes. Then, the epiglottis allows air to pass from the larynx to a long tube in the chest cavity called trachea or windpipe. The trachea branches into two large tubes called bronchi, which leads to the lungs. The lungs are the largest organs of the respiratory system and 
it is where gas exchange takes place. Each bronchus branches into smaller tubes called bronchioles that continue to branch into even smaller passageways, each of which ends in an individual air sac called an alveolus. Each alveolus has a thin wall, only one cell thick, and it is surrounded by a very thin capillaries. Here are the summary of the path of air into the lungs. The air first enter your mouth or nose, then to pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli. How does gas exchange in the lungs? Gas exchange in the lungs. Air travels to individual alveoli where oxygen diffuses across the moist thin walls into capillaries, then into red blood cells. The oxygen is then transported by the blood to be released to tissue cells in the body during internal respiration. Meanwhile, carbon dioxide moves in the opposite direction in the alveoli. Carbon dioxide in the blood crosses capillary walls and then diffuses into the alveoli to be returned to the atmosphere during external respiration. Now let us discuss the breathing process. The brain directs the rate of breathing by responding to internal stimuli that indicate how much oxygen the body needs. When the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood is high, the breathing rate increases because cells need more oxygen. The act of taking air into the lungs is called inhalation. During inhalation, as shown in the figure, the diaphragm contracts. This causes the chest cavity to expand as the diaphragm moves down, allowing air to move into the lungs. During exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes and returns to its normal resting position. This reduces the size of the chest cavity as the diaphragm moves up. Air naturally flows out from the greater pressure of the lungs.